first bank in Alexander City began in a corner of Hertzfield, Brother and Company, and was operated by Mr. Reuben Hertzfeld. The second bank in the county was organized in 1889 in Alex City by Mr. Reuben Hertzfeld. And uh, he was the first president, and then Mr. J.C. Maxwell was the second president. And I think it actually started in the what we know as the old Frozen's building now. At that point in time, it was Frozen and Hurstfield, or Ralph might say Hurstfield and Frozen. I mean, but nevertheless, uh, the bank grew and prospered till uh, we see it now on the corner, and it's known as the South Trust Bank, of course. <coughs> Mr. Maxwell had many uh, relatives still living in Ellick City today. Uh, Mr. Jake Henderson, uh, the father of uh, Jacob and Martha, uh, and others, John Dillon, to name another one, and there's some others that I'm sure that we could all think of too. There have been other presidents of that bank. Uh, Mr. Uh, Harry Hurstfield was the third one. Mr. Leon Willis was the fourth one. Judge Coley was the fifth one. And Jimmy Ewan was the sixth one. At the turn of the century, banking was done differently than it is done today. A rural economy drove the banking industry and shaped the ways of doing business for the banks. The money at that point in time was used to make crops. And we had a lot of farming in this area. Uh, we had a little manufacturing, but we had more farming than anything else. And so the farmers borrowed money to make the crop. And that came out of the real purpose of, of banking is to serve the needs of the community. And that was a need in the community at that time. People had no cash. They certainly didn't know how to write checks and didn't have checks. Uh, they dealt in cash, but they had very little of it, and they wouldn't have it but about once or twice a year, and that was when they sold their crop and hopefully sold it for a profit and hopefully paid their debts and hopefully had a little left over. And uh, interest on uh, accounts probably didn't come into effect uh, as we know it until Maybe in the 1930s and the 1940s, uh, banks didn't have to pay for the use of the money. And of course, if you don't have to pay for the use of the money, you'd make a lot of money. And uh, banks during that period of time were very successful without having to pay for the use of the funds. And today, we have to pay for the use of our funds. And the uh, money is for the same thing, to serve the needs of the community. One of the needs of the community was to get the money in the hands of the public, and banks met this need. Banks used to receive shipments of money from the federal government many, many years ago, uh, before most of us were born. And uh, it was back in the late 20s and the early 30s. And they would, it would come in in large sheets the size of a newspaper page and they'd have the name of the bank on it. And there'd be a place for the president to sign, a place for the cashier to sign. And the president would sign his name, the cashier would sign his name. And then some clerk would take it and actually cut it with scissors. And that's uh, the way the money got out into use in the public and in society. Reuben Hertzfeld, the town's first banker, came into Alexander City in 1874. Reuben Hertzfeld's granddaughter, Clara Ewing told stories surrounding the history of the Hertzfeld family. My grandfather was Reuben Hertzfeld, and he was born in uh, the province of Hesse, in a little town called Orlson in Germany. And back in those days, they, uh, when I guess when they got to be 21 years old, they cons the Prussian army conscripted them into uh, service. And I think that's why my grandfather came to this country. He was 19 years old when he immigrated, uh, migrated to this country. And uh, he uh, landed at Philadelphia. He, his, the boat he came in on came to Philadelphia. There was no Ellis Island then. That was in 1861. And uh, at least that's what the census says. And so he then started rolling cigars in a cigar factory in New York City. He lived in the back of the factory. And uh, he's very poor. And uh, saved his money and finally bought enough uh, merchandise to put on his back and uh, peddled in Pennsylvania. 
The routing of the railroad through Alexander City attracted Mr. Hertzfield to the town, where he and his brother Harry established Hertzfield Brother and Company. Here, customers could buy piece goods, work shoes, overalls, and staple provisions like meat, salt, sugar, flour, and green coffee. In the right-hand corner from the entrance of the store, an enclosure about 7 by 10 feet with a roll-top desk, a vault of stone with an iron door, and a burglar-proof safe marked the location of the town's first bank. In the 40-foot wide brick store, a customer could sell his cotton and purchase needed goods in return. People brought that cotton in to him and, and, and then he sold the cotton and kept their money for them and, and invested their money for them and, and also he, they traded it out at the store. The people just sort of forced him into the banking business. And uh, Judge Coley has told me a story that his father wouldn't put when they chartered, made a, got a charter and chartered the bank. He went around and got different people in the community to subscribe so much money to start the bank. And it started with a $55,000 capital. And uh, Mr. Coley, Jack's daddy, Jack, he told me this, that wouldn't put his money in the bank. And he still wanted my grandfather to keep the money like he'd always done. But uh, that's how the bank started.